Good morning, my brothers and sisters, Long Branch, and to all those who are listening. We thank God for you. Let me say it again. Good morning to all of you, Long Branch, and to all those who are listening. It's good to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. We know that we're having these hard times. This coronavirus is worldwide in, in Shelby, in Charlotte, Kings Mountain, Grover. We got to watch out for that. Got to be careful. Wear your mask, put on your gloves, stay in the house as much as you can. But God is good. Let me read the scripture for you today before I start. Uh, Psalm 121 is what I always do before I uh, preach on uh, in times like these. It says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up early this morning and letting us see a brand new day. Didn't have to do it, but you did, Lord. Father God, we pray for this message, for this service. We pray for all those who are listening. And Lord, we're praying that through your word, somebody will be strengthened. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, today's uh, scripture will come from Acts, the third chapter. Acts, the third chapter. But you know, before I get started, I do want to give honor to God. For God deserves all the honor and all the praise. And to our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, and to the Holy Ghost. Some call him the Holy Ghost, some call him the Holy Spirit, but he is precious. Because in the midnight hour, he's always there. When you wake up, he's always there. So we thank God for this beautiful day. Now, the scripture, as I said, is coming from uh, the book of Acts and it would be Acts, uh, the third chapter, and we'll begin at verse 1. Acts, the third chapter, and we'll begin at verse 1. And this is a familiar uh, story, but it's beautiful, it's powerful, and it's, it will give you joy. And it shows how God is still working miracles. Now, Acts chapter 3 in verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, laying from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked alms, asked in alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That was Peter's message to him. And today, let me use for a subject, if you will. In the name of of Jesus in the name of Jesus 
I'm going to take my time today. I've been rushing. Let me just slow down and take my time today. It's all right for me to take my time. I heard somebody say amen. Question. When is it the best time to pray? When is, when is there a good time to pray? King David said, in the evening and in the morning and at noon will I pray. And he said this, I'm going to cry aloud. And he shall hear my voice. Let me go back to that. I'm going to pray in the morning, in the evening. I'm going to pray at night. I'm going to pray aloud. And God will hear my voice. Won't God hear you? You got to know that he will. However, Jesus gave us the perfect time to pray. Jesus did. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men ought to always to pray. That men ought always to pray and not faint. In other words, brothers and sisters, keep on praying. And never, underline the word never, never give up on God. Because God will never give up on you. Now back to our story. Back to our scripture. Peter and John were men who prayed. They believed in prayer. You got to believe in prayer. You see, prayer comes natural to a child of God. Let me say it again. If you are a child of God, prayer is natural for you. <laughs> Jesus said, watch and pray that you enter not into, into temptation, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Watch and pray. And then Paul said this in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. This is the only words he put in that particular scripture. Paul said, pray without ceasing. In other words, don't stop praying. It doesn't matter how bad things get, don't stop praying. It doesn't matter if, you, if you're up or down, don't stop praying. Paul said, pray without ceasing. Praise be to God. And then there is the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. James 5 and 15a. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. We can only pray for the sick. It takes God to lift us, to lift him up. The prayer of faith, we pray, we believe and God will save the sick, heal their bodies. Am I right about that? God will raise them up. Another thing, church, to all my brothers and sisters, to all of you, when you pray, Listen, you ought to pray and believe in that prayer. Why are you going to pray and don't even believe in it? Pray it and claim your miracles. On the end of that miracle, I put an S. Pray for it and claim your miracles. God has more than one miracle for you. Claim it. <laughs> and when you pray, keep this in mind. When you pray, do it, pray it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> in his name, in your name, Jesus. You can't do anything in my name or your name, but in his name. Now, Peter and John were on their way to the house of prayer. <laughs> That's where they were going. The house of prayer. This was at the hour of prayer. There was a designated time to pray. Well, and they were on their way to the temple. The designated time, the, the time of prayer was the Bible said the ninth hour, three o'clock p.m. And they couldn't wait to get into the house of God to pray. As God's children, we are God's children. 
You are a child of God. I'm a child of God. As God's children, we are prayer warriors. The military men and women, they pick up their arms, their rifles. And, and in the old days, they're born arrows, their spears. But we fight with prayer. We are prayer warriors. When you fall on your knees, you are praying. You are warriors. Seeking the power of God through prayer. Praying for our families. You know how it is. Praying that God will keep them. God will save them. We're prayer warriors. We got to be serious when we fall down on our knees. Praying for our families. Praying for the church of God. That the church of God might stand. The devil is out of the church of God. Want to start trouble for the church of God. We have to pray that God's church will stand. We are prayer warriors. Praying for the whole world to be healed of this coronavirus. Scientists can't do it. The president can't do it. I can't do it. It would take God to heal this land from that coronavirus. Back to Peter and John. Now, Peter and John were men of God. We got men of God, women of God, youth of God, young folk for God. These were men of God, Peter and John. They knew something that we ought to know. They knew the power of prayer. There is power in prayer. Let me tell you what prayer would do for you. Prayer will give you confidence Prayer will bring you closer to God. Somebody said, much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. And then somebody told me, went to my heart to say this in the church. No prayer, no power. These were men of prayer. Prayer will bring you closer to God. Let me tell you one thing. I got a story to tell you about my grandbaby, Caitlin. When she was young, she would walk behind me, step up on me. And if I would stop, she'd run into me. I want to be that close to God. If he stopped, I'd run into him. Prayer would bring you closer to God. In the name of Jesus. Peter and John, on their way to the temple, the hour of prayer. Peter and John came up on a lame man. Lame from his, from his mother's womb. He was born lame. The Bible said there was a certain man. They didn't give his name. But a certain man. He was lame from his birth. Never walked. Some of his friends carried him daily to the gate that's called beautiful. The gate called beautiful. You see, it's good to have friends. It's good to have family. It's good to have friends. Let me tell you one thing. In order to have a friend, you got to be a friend. In order to have someone love you, you got to love them. He had friends. They carried him every day to the gate that was called beautiful. And every day, you could find him down by that gate, begging, begging. But one day, God, <laughs> let me say it again, one day, God, when you're down and out, God, when you feel like you can't make it, God, one day he was down and out, one day, one day, he was down by the gate, brother, begging. But he looked up and saw two men of God, Peter and John. But God, God sent these men. God made this happen. Anything that happens to me that is good, God did it. One day he was lying there, sitting there, begging. But there came two men of God, Peter and John. He, he didn't know. Now, what he didn't know? That these were two broke preachers. <laughs> they had no money. 
Two broke preachers. Two preachers going to the church to pray. When you go to the house of God, you have to go to prayer on your, on your tongue, prayer in your heart, prayer on your mind. You ought to be praying on the way to church and praying when you get in the church and praying while you're in the church. It takes that much prayer. These two preachers were on the way to church to pray. Didn't have no money now. But they were filled with the Holy Ghost of God. They had within themselves the power of God. And if you got the power of God, you got the power to do anything, uh, anything, any, anything you need, God will give it. You had a power to pray for the sick. You had a power to pray for yourself. Pray for the world. Pray for the coronavirus. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray. These were two praying men. Well, the lame man, he asked Peter and John for alms, for some money, or for something to help him out. He didn't care what it was. The, the, this man, this lame man, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. He asked them for some money. I need something. Will you please help me? His life, he didn't know one thing. When he met with these two men of God, filled with the Holy Ghost, praying men, he didn't know, but his life would never be the same ever again. When you meet Jesus, your life would never be the same. My life has never been the same ever again. <laughs> he wanted some arms. Peter and John looked straight in him. The Bible said they fastened their eyes upon him. They looked at him. And Peter said, look on us. Look at us. Have y'all been talking to somebody? And they looking off, not paying attention. Peter and John looked straight at him, gave him their attention. And then they said, look on us, look at us, give us your attention. Because we got some stuff for you. We got some spiritual food for you. Look it up, he's lying down, sitting down. Look it up at Peter and John. Expecting to receive alms. Expecting to receive some money or something of value. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Get up, man. Get up and walk. Stand up on your own two feet and walk. But in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, get up off your bed. Get up from where you're sitting down, lying down. <laughs> the power of God will raise you up. Acts 3, verses 7 and 8. And Peter took him by his right hand. You got to give somebody a hand every now and then. You got to lift somebody up. Didn't somebody lift you up? Didn't somebody pray for you? It said Peter took him by his right hand. Give somebody your right hand. And lifted him up. Lift somebody up every now and then. And the Bible said immediately. Not, not later on, not tomorrow, but immediately right now. His feet and ankle bones received strength. Ain't God good? Peter had faith. The man had faith. You gotta have faith. When you, when you ask for something, have faith. Am I right? You got to pray for it, believe it, have faith, and look for a miracle, knowing that God is a miracle worker. Immediately, his feet and ankle bone received their strength. Look at the power of prayer and the power of faith. 
Keep that in mind. That was the power of prayer, the power of faith. He spoke it into existence, told a man to get up, as if the man could get up and the man got up. You got to speak it as if it's already there. And he, the man that was lying down, sitting down, he leaping up, he didn't just, he leaped up and stood on his feet and he walked. He didn't go home. He didn't go through the neighborhood. He entered with them into the temple. Look at this man now. Couldn't walk from his mother's womb, a grown man. Look at him walking and leaping. I said he's walking and leaping, but he's praising God. Sometimes when God bless us, we forget to thank him, we forget to praise him, but he was walking, he was leaping, and he was praising God. <laughs> My God, that's what we ought to do when we come to church. When we come to when we when we come to the house of worship, when we come to the house of God. Don't come in gossiping. Don't come in looking around and see what, who's there or what they got on. But when you come to the house of God, <laughs> you are to enter his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, be thankful unto him and bless his name. The Bible says, for the Lord is good. Let me say it again. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and His truth endures to all generations. The Lord is good. <laughs> Let me tell you, church, I'm going to close now. But silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. You've been sitting down too long. The coronavirus got you down. The finances got you down. People got you down. The news media got you down. Stand up and walk. Rise up and walk. Stop that pity party. Rise up and walk. Selling gold have I none, but such as I have. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus, get up out of that sickness. In the name of Jesus, get up. Out of your pity party bed, get up. And when you get up, give God some glory. He went inside leaping and praising, leaping and walking and praising God. Get up and give God some glory. Let everything, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. You and you and you and you praise God. You are to praise God. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If God has washed you in the blood, if God died for you, give God some glory. Rise up where you are, in your living room, in your bedroom. Get up and give God some glory. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We got to praise God. We got to thank God. Who do you think woke you up this morning? Who do you think protected you from the coronavirus? It was God. We serve an awesome God. God is awesome. He's worthy to be praised. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I glorify your name. I lift your name up because you are an awesome God. That's who he is. An awesome God. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I give you joy. I give you peace. I, I give you salvation in Jesus' name. That's what I, I have no money. I don't have seven gold. But such as I have, I give you the word of God. The word of God. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us. You have protected us from that coronavirus. You have protected us from the thieves and the robbers. You watched over us as we slept last night. Early this morning, you woke us up. And with, with you waking us up, you also gave us some new grace and mercy. We say thank you. 
But Father, we're praying for the first line workers. We're praying for the essential workers. The doctors, the nurses, the emergency room, the emergency room workers, the ambulance drivers, the firemen, the policemen, the grocery store workers, those who are essential. Who, who, those who got to get out, Lord. We pray that you would bless them, go with them, Lord. And Father, those of us who are sheltered in our homes, Lord, bless us that when we come out, we come out with our masks, with our gloves, and we come out most of all with prayer. We're covered in your blood, Lord. So we say thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you that in the name of Jesus, men and women can be healed. Families can be healed. The world can be healed. Heal us, Lord, in the name of Jesus from the coronavirus. In the name of Jesus. The man got to walk in and leap in and praising God. You are to walk in your house and leap and praise God because God is worthy to be praised. Now, if you want to be saved, Go to God in a serious way and say, God, I am a sinner. Forgive my sins. And God will. And say, Lord, I have some things in my life that I need to get rid of, but I, I just can't do it. I have no strength. Give me the power. And God will. So you've been forgiven. You confess your sins. You have repented and say, Lord, come into my life. Save me. And God will. Once you are saved, don't worry about what you're going to do, how you're going to act and react. Because God will lead you and guide you. To all my brothers and sisters, I don't know when the, church, the churches will open again. We're looking at how North Carolina and the rest of the um, states are doing. But most of all, we're praying to God. Listen, pray without ceasing and always in the name of Jesus. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God rest, rule, and abide henceforth and forevermore. Let us all say amen, amen, and amen.